Ooh, look at this. The old Brunner Bridge. Today, my friends, we're in Brunner, the site of the worst coal mining disaster in New Zealand's history. I'm standing in the middle of the Grey River right here. Now, if you look in the distance there, my friends, you can see a little place called Taylorville. And that place was not so little come a hundred years ago. That was a bustling township with thousands of people living there. It was 9.30 in the morning, 26th of March, 1896. All hell broke loose around here, my friends. All hell broke loose. It was Thursday, the 26th of March, 1896. Dawn sunny and calm at Brunnerton Mine. It was business as usual. The surface workers were stoking the boiler furnaces, oiling the steam engines and attending to the haulage ropeways. While a full shift of men and boys was entering the Brunner coal mine, four pit ponies used for underground hauling coal trucks up to the incline were being led into the mine entrance by a stable hand, but for some reason they refused to enter into the darkness. Three times those horses took fright and bolted. The drivers just couldn't hold them. They reared and kicked and squealed and lashed out and everything else, and they bolted back up to their stables and they were shaking and shivering. The stable hands finally put their coats over the horses' heads, backed them down to their doom, you mean. At 9.30am, an hour and 20 minutes later, a bell rang at the surface. The engine driver noted the clip rope for the truck haulage fell to the floor and a yellowish-black smoke billowed from the mine mouth. There had been a massive explosion underground. Mine manager James Bishop and engine driver Robert Smith immediately entered the mine to investigate, but were overcome by deadly damp gases. Others scrambled to their aid and carried them out unconscious. Lethal carbon monoxide experienced this close to the entrance did not bode well for those further underground. An incredible rescue effort went on day and night. People at neighbouring mines and villages and from as far away as Deniston, that's north of Westport, downed tools and hurried to the disaster site. Men battled the foul air and shifts for up to half an hour while working to restore the mine's airflow. They risked their lives in an attempt to reach the trapped miners, but body after body was stretched to the surface. The reality of death fell like a thick veil over the relatives waiting at the mine's entrance. The last miner's body was recovered five days after the explosion, bringing the death toll to 65. The Brunner mine disaster remains New Zealand's worst industrial accident. Not a living soul left. The disaster left 37 widows, 186 dependent children, and 14 dependent aged people in its wake. These women, children, and elderly dependents became reliant on the charitable givings of the New Zealand public. The Bronington Relief Fund was quickly established, and donations of money, clothing, toys flowed in from every corner of the colony, about £33,000. Equivalent to about six and a half million dollars in today's money was raised, which equaled to 11 shillings and three pence per head of New Zealand's population. At the time, it was considered to be an extremely generous outpouring of support. It had to be, because there was no welfare state, no accident compensation, and no other benefits available. The funeral was a monumentous occasion. That was the best way to describe it, according to the Greymouth paper at the time. Attendance was established to be at about 6,000 persons. They came in their hundreds and thousands from different districts. They were all assembled to pay their respect to the dead. Amidst the grief and sorrow, carpenters railed to prepare the coffins, while 40 seamstress worked around the clock sewing yards of black cloth to suitably clothe the mourners in time for the funerals. By the Sunday, just three days after the disaster, a large funeral was in progress. Most of the widows and children were transported with the coffins the two and a half kilometres from Brunner to Stillwater by a special slow train. Following on foot was a solemn procession accompanied by Handel's Dead March from Seoul, performed by numerous local bands. At Stillwater Cemetery, 33 of the victims would lay to rest in a mass grave. The remaining victims were buried in private family plots at Stillwater and Greymouth. What we've done, my friends, is I've driven across the Grey River, across the Stillwater Bridge, and now we're at the uh, Brunner Mine Disaster Memorial on the 26th of March 1896 and there's a mass grave in here guys if we want to come and have a look and I would say it's going to be this one over here guys there's some old headstones in here as well by goody and here we have it my friends here we have it wow not the best day for it the rain's blowing in now but we'll have a look while we're here 
Look at that wrought ironwork, my friends. I'd say that would be constructed exactly the same time as they buried these poor fellas. Wow. Here we go. In the memory of the 65 miners who lost their lives by the explosion in the Brunner mine. Anyway, my friends, I'm getting the hell out of here. I am getting absolutely soaked. See, this is where we are here today, guys. This is 2023. And if we have a look here, my friends, and this is 1896. Still looks a little bit familiar, doesn't it? And this has got the old coal wagon here. Oh, but you that brings back memories, guys. Cool, look at the size of it. Looks like it's got like a, a tipping feature on the back there that they must just tip the, the coal out. Of course they do, it's a tipping wagon, you idiot. <laughs> so here we go, my friends, what can we see? Oh, so here we go, here are some of the rescuers. Look at them, my friends, hard looking men. Look, they've even got little boys in there as well. Crazy. This is at the Brana mine entrance when they were trying to rescue their fellow workers underground. See the old lamp here, guys? Crazy, eh? Oh, there's another lamp over here. This man here is smoking a cigar or a cigarette. Smoking a cigarette when there's noxious gases around. It's probably a good idea. This is the mine shaft. Return airway. So this was the return air shaft. So the, I think the air got sucked in by the river and it returned out here or vice versa. I'm no coal miner, but I'll take you down by the river shortly. And there's still a ventilation shaft down there that smells really, really bad. It smells like rotten eggs. It smells like sulfur. You can smell it as soon as you get out of the car here. So hundred years later, we're still getting those horrible smells. Tell you what, my friends, it's raining here on the coast, but she is a nice warm day. She's beautiful. Mind you, even if it's raining on the coast, it's awesome, guys. I love it, I love it, I love it. You gotta come and see us here. Got a raging torrent or something up here, my friends. Pig and Whistle Mine Site. Hear the birds? A lot more steps up here, my friends. Oh, she's mossy and slippery around here. What's in there? That looks like some sort of shaft as well, guys. Yeah, it is, look. See that there? We have a look up there, see that's some sort of timber workings for a shaft, obviously caved in. Is that cool or is that cool? Can you imagine them doing that like 150 years ago? Yeah, I think it's awesome. See we've got old pipe work everywhere here guys. Goes for miles by looks. What we got right here? There we are guys, we have like a weigh table. They used to weigh the coal on. What do we got here? We've got some big humongous shafts. These are over 100 years old, my friends. Look at this. Some big humongous shaft in the ground. Look at it, moss growing over the top of it. And big huge bolts here, holding something together. Look at this, guys, look at this. Looks like a crankshaft or something. Yeah, it looks like a, yeah, it is a crankshaft. See, here we've got the, where the pistons go up here. One big machine, whatever it was, and whatever it was, I guarantee you it's steam. Oh, look at this, guys. Oh, just left in the bush here. Mind you, 100 odd years ago, this was a working coal mine. Absolutely crazy. Some sort of steam vessel. I think, yeah, it looks like a steam vessel. Cool. What's inside? Hey. I bet you that could tell a few stories, my friends. It's hard to believe, like, 100 odd years ago, isn't it? It's more than that, actually. What is it? Yeah, 150 years ago. Crazy. And here's Pete showing you guys on YouTube. How crazy is that? There's an old support beam for something. I would say it's 
or some sort of boiler or something. It is huge. The old concrete block. Guys, I don't actually know what that is, but it looks like it's some sort of ventilation shaft or something like that. Looks like it's had a hole right on the top of it. Also got old railway sleepers here by the look of it. They look pretty old as well, guys. Crazy things that have been lying here for a hundred odd years. Got a huge one here, guys. Look at it. Some sort of real big solid beam. It's huge. I bet you it weighs about two or three bloody ton, this thing. Absolutely unbelievable. Wow. Here's the ventilation shaft from the top, guys. Coming down here, guys, it really, really stinks. Like I said before, it's that sulfur smell. It's pretty overpowering, actually. Mighty Grey River. It's where they used to float the coal down in barges to Greymouth before they got the railway line established. the old Brunner Bridge up there. See that there guys? That's how they used to get the coal to Greymouth and these little barges right from this point here. Absolutely crazy. Right at the mine face. Up there. Between 1864 and 1876, believe it or not my friends, 130,000 tonnes which barge from here down the Grey River to Greymouth. The Grey River is unpredictable and about eight wooden barges 35 to 60 feet long each capable of carrying 16 to 22 tons depending on how rough the river was at the time bugger that for a job guys on a really good week 20 barges made it from here all the way to Greymouth and then they used to use horses to drag the barges all the way back up from Greymouth all the way back up here again and they'd start all over again wow here we have the new bridge anchors like so and if we look behind it guys there's the hundred year old ones wow wee what a different way of constructing it was back then look at that porous concrete feature that could tell you a few stories guys this is the modern way look at the size of those threads on those nuts guys this is the old way now remember when I was telling you there's this mine shaft here you can see from the bridge and it really really stinks let's have a look see if we can find it now there's a terrible putrid smell coming out of that I think that's the gas that's still coming out of the old mine absolutely crazy and you know how I told you I used to live in Taylorville up there I remember sitting in our lounge and all of a sudden we heard this rumble 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 my dad always used to say it's the railway wagons deep beneath the ground they've broken loose and they've smashed into another wagon because our house was right on top of the old coal mine pretty awesome eh what have we got here guys looks like some sort of big wheel that they use to pull the wagons up wow pretty cool eh i think that's where the rope went around the edge there and maybe it had a handle or something on it and they just pulled it around with horses i don't know pretty interesting stuff eh crazy to think what happened around here eh Look at that old narrow gauge railway line, 100 odd years old. Looks like the uh, bearings went on here and the cranks there, so that's probably for a big steam engine. Some sort of thing to, I don't know, maybe you attach that to a horse or something. Oh, look at this, guys. Big, humongous steam engine cogs of some description. Geez, they certainly knew how to make machinery back then. Look at that. I would say that's off some sort of engine as well. Once again, crank here. Man, that's huge. That would probably weigh probably three quarters of a ton. Another one here. Some sort of pump of some description by the look of it, guys. Look at that. Wow, we. It looks like a pump with those sort of veins on it. This is one of the original supports for the bridge, I think. The bridge over the Grey River. Made out of brick. <laughs> How crazy is that? Brick and wood. Looks like we have some old remains of some boilers. Something like that, guys. Wow. 
How cool is that? Radio, my friends, it's time for Pete's, Pete's Lou Review. Review. So what do we got here, my friends? We are in the middle of the afternoon, so let's check out these loos. Look at that. It's nice and clean, guys. We have water coming out of the sink, which is brilliant. We've got loo paper, we got a double flush, and we've got a clean toilet. Awesome guys, looks like they've been cleaned a couple of times so far today. So, you're safe to have a pee here. Right, what have we got here? Oh, this is the Brano Memorial. Oh, and this tells us what was going on at the time. See these bricks here guys, these were all made here as well. Brunner was known for its bricks, they made fire bricks, pretty awesome. I think it was one of the biggest places in New Zealand to actually manufacture fire bricks in the 1800s. British coal miners were encouraged to journey to New Zealand during the 1870s in a bid to open up the promising coal seams discovered here. An incentive they were offered was a free passage by the New Zealand government in the midst of mine closures and bleak prospects back home. Many coal miners and their families jumped at the chance for a better life and possibly even land ownership in a new world. And of course the new world was the west coast of the South Island of New Zealand. Some of the first immigrants arrived in Nelson in 1879 on board a ship called the Opawa. 50 coal miners from Forest of Dean, Durham and Yorkshire coal fields had been sought on behalf of the Westport Coal Company at the mine at Deniston, north of Westport. However, there was great disappointment when the company manager broke the employment promise. Behind that was infrastructure delays and rumours were going around that trade unions Methodist persuasion amongst the new miners. <laughs> trade unions of Methodist persuasion. Well, there you go. Having travelled almost 12,000 miles to reach Nelson, these newcomers were jobless. Many eventually found their way here to the expanding Brunner coalfield, where a new migrant community had started to settle. Dense bush was cleared to make way for small pit villages that evolved around the coal mines at the time and beyond the gorge. The place was initially described as comfortless and remote and a far cry from the populated landscape of their homeland. I bet it was, because there's nothing here, guys. By the 1800s, the Grey Valley coal miners were the most productive in the colony. In 1888, the population reached over 2,000, reflecting the surge of migrants and family growth, as well as peak coal production in the gorge. Young wives, in-laws, single adults, parents and children all packed their trunks to accompany the men on the voyage to the unknown or followed later in a chain migration across the globe. Coal mining communities like Brunner were close-knit, bound together with strong kinship ties. The Brunner woman made up a high percentage of the population, keeping the home fires burning and giving vital support to family and the breadwinners. That awesome or is that awesome? That's a long way from home, isn't it? Around the other side of the world. See on this photo here, guys, it's extended family and friends gather for the wedding of Eva Pascoe outside the family home at Taylorville, 1906. I grew up in Taylorville, just down the road there, guys. Things I do for you guys, we're at Taylorville. Let's go and see if we can find one of those old miners' houses, eh? Can you see the Brunner Bridge there in the distance, guys? That's how close we are. So here we are, my friends. We're about 500 metres from the bridge, 600 metres from the bridge. And this is a little town called Taylorville. That was a little city in the coal mining days in the 1800s. Now you can still see some of the original buildings here. Well, I think they're original anyway. Let's have a look. Let's have a look through this little town, guys. You see this building here on the left here. I would say this is one of the original buildings. In fact, it could even be one of those buildings in those photos, my friends. See that? That is definitely an old building. Hard to believe that there were thousands of people living here, all up on the hills behind there, everywhere. Unbelievable another building here my friends that looks like an original building it's now into a shop or something like that that very well could be another original homestead there my friends wow if only these buildings could talk what do you think they'd tell us same as usual guys if you like my videos remember to subscribe drop me a like drop me a comment in the comments below if there's anywhere in New Zealand that you'd like me to go to once again thanks for all those people who shouted me a coffee it really helps me get around the country and expand the channel a little bit I'll chuck another couple of videos either side you guys can have a look at. And until next time, see you later. Oh, and keep dry.